Hi, welcome back to a new series of Lino Cut films. Um, during this series I'm not going to work on just one print, I'm actually going to work on two prints. So I have these two little prints here and the reason they're so small is because this series is all about hand printing and I want to work with uh, paper from the Awagami paper factory from their sample pack. So that's kind of dictated the size of the work. So I have these two images here and they're effectively pretty much the same drawing. It's just that one is up in Scotland and one is in the home counties. So similar composition and theme, just a very different geography. But I'm going to talk more about those as we progress through the series. What I wanted to talk to you about today is how I get to having a drawing. So I go out into the landscape and I do sketches. And as you can see from this one, they're usually really rough and scribbly. I don't really like being out in the landscape very much, um, which sounds awful, but I have, I have a sore back and I don't like sitting too long and things like that. So my sketches in the landscape tend to be very scribbly and sort of quite a lot of them. Uh, and I will just go through the sketchbook and just make lots and lots of notes. So these form the basis of the ideas about the landscape that I'm in. So what I find interesting. So in this example for here, what I like is the shape of this hill and the dark sky and the dark hill in the background and those white clouds. So along with this, I'll take a lot of photographs. So the photographs are there so that I can check how things look in reality and maybe look at colours, things like that. But they don't tend to give me my compositional ideas. That comes from the sketches. So that's kind of um, a quick sketch. When I have somewhere comfortable to sit, then I might play around and do something more detailed. Um, I did this on uh, a holiday we went on recently where I was sitting very comfortably and I could concentrate and this is like massive mountain here so I've just been sort of playing about with coloured pencils. Normally I would draw just with a soft pencil. So when I'm out and about that's the kind of drawing that I do and when I get into the studio I'll take those drawings and I'll work it up into what I call a design drawing. So this is a drawing intended for making into a print. And this particular one, I haven't made the print yet. I've made, uh, this is a Japanese woodblock drawing uh, and I've cut the blocks, I haven't printed them yet. And as you can see here, I'm still working in pencil, but I'm working out all the details of the drawing. And also maybe you can see I've done some editing so I will do my drawing and then I will edit it and I will crop it down and I'll make it bigger and stick bits on and do things like that. But what I end up with is what I would call a design drawing, which in fact is what I have here with these two drawings I'm going to be working on for this series. So these are the design drawings. Sometimes my design drawings are um, much more carefully done. This is a drawing that I did for a public art project and here you can see um, it's almost like a, a dress pattern or an architect's drawing. It's very very carefully outlined so that I know where all the shapes and things are going. So that's a, a sort of good example of a more um, finished design drawing there. So in terms of resources for drawing, um, along with going out into um, the landscape, I, I do use a lot of books. So I have books like railway posters. I love railway posters. They're always quite good for looking at composition and shape and form. Um, books of particular artists that I really admire. And the other thing I have a lot of are books which I go to for sort of cutting ideas and technique ideas. So for example, here's one um, about wood engravers because they are absolute masters of, of cutting marks because they have to set, they, they, they work, uh, these wood engravers are all working in black and white. So they have to control 
all of the tones and all of the the detail in one colour. So I often turn to them for ideas of how to make marks and things like that. So I have a library of books that I refer to. I also um, keep a lot of bits and bobs in my studio. So here's a couple of very tatty examples that probably won't mean anything to you, but mean things to me. Um, so if I if I have a sort of shape that I like the thought of, so I in Japan they have gravel gardens, and I was in one, and I particularly like this sort of combination of tall stone and leaning over stone. And I've got this little sketch here that's sort of sitting on the side. Now that might turn into a rock in a gravel garden, but it's much more likely to turn into something in a landscape. You know, I'll use that design in a landscape or something like that. This little one was an idea that I had for doing some work um, based on a, an apple tree in my garden and our wood pile. And I tried and tried to draw it and it just did not work. And so I abandoned the idea of that print. But this little sketch, I quite like the composition of, so I'm going to hang on to that and it could come in useful later. So I have lots of sort of little funny bits like that, which, you know, I might go to it a year and a half later and suddenly think, oh, now that's the shape I want. So I don't throw stuff like that away, really. So those are the kind of ways that I find my inspiration. And I, I might draw more once I've done my design drawing and transferred it to the lino. So here is an example, let me find it, of one that I'm, I'm working on at the moment. If you're following me on Instagram or Facebook, you might have seen this, this big print. And I have a drawing here, and I, I've been kind of playing with the idea of this, this again, it's Scotland, a uh, Scottish coastal picture. And so I've got this, this sort of quite complete design drawing, but I've also drawn more once it's on the lino. And again, transferring to lino uh, and drawing on lino is something that we're going to look at a lot in this series because I, I want a lot to be about design and, and transfer and things like that. So here you can see I've actually gone over the whole thing. Now this is using um, a dip pen, like a, a, a nib, in, in, in black ink and that's what's giving me these lines always a bit deceptive when I do that because of course you're seeing it as heavy black lines and it's very contrasty when I come to the actual print those will probably be quite pale colored lines but that's sort of a conti I'm showing you this more to explain that the drawing can carry on beyond the design beyond the sketch the design drawing going onto the lino and I'm still drawing so the drawing kind of never stops. Um, the other thing I would say about drawing is that I need time to warm up. So when I'm drawing, I always reckon on about half an hour to get comfortable before I do anything decent. Um, and then I try and draw a lot because it's, it's like any other skill. The more you do it, the kind of more fluent you get at it. So my way of drawing is very particularly tailored to printmaking. It's, it's drawing in a way um, that suits my style of printmaking. So that's a little bit about drawing and how I get to the drawings that we're going to use. I hope you've enjoyed this first episode and that you'll join me again for the next one where we're going to look at the specific design drawings. Thanks very much. <laughs>